What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Mikhail Casanova, coming at you with yet another banging video. And in this video, I'm basically going to be uh, doing a review of a game that's really near and dear to my heart. This A series, rather, that's super near and dear to my heart because I grew up playing it in various incarnations, various platforms, and I'm just really overwhelmed and... and, and, and I gotta say thank you to NIS America and to Falcom for sending me a review copy of Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Donna. This game is by far one of the greatest PlayStation 4 games on PlayStation games to release of this year. And in this video, this review that I'm doing, I'm basically going to be telling you why you need to cop this. When this drops, September 12th, you need to be in GameStop, Best Buy, Amazon, I don't care. Wherever you can go to get this game, you need to get it. You need to cop. And this video is going to tell you why. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this video rolling. If you guys want to be entered in any of the giveaways I have going on right now, check the links below. Roll the intro music. Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Donna is the follow-up to Ease Memories of Salsetta for the PlayStation Vita. It's an action RPG which at its heart is all about adventuring and exploration. Ease is a long-running series that has been around since the 80s, but you don't need to be familiar with any of the previous games to understand what's happening here. While there are some returning characters and a few brief references to past events, each game features its own self-contained story and this one's no different. The E series has players controlling adventurer Adol Christian throughout his numerous adventures, each illustrated as a literal chapter in the many journals he left behind after his death. In E's 8's case, players relive his journal on his adventures in the Isles of Siren, an island where any ships that drift near it sink. After the opening of the game, Adol and the passengers of the Lombardia, a passenger ship en route from Zandria to Greek, locations in the easy universe that is, find themselves stranded on this dreaded isle. From then on, players are tasked with exploring their new surroundings, finding fellow castaways, building up and defending the group's makeshift village from attacks, set, which are set as a sort of tower defense style of minigame, and more. Much like E7, the playable party consists of up to three characters in the active group at once, and each character's attacks are separated into three attributes, and they are Slash, Strike, and Pierce. Similar to E7, certain enemies are weak to certain attacks, and players are expected to swap out their characters to suit whatever obstacles are in your party's way. What wasn't in E7, however, is the ability to break enemies' outer defenses by hammering on them with the right attribute long enough and significantly weakening them to every attack. Blocking and dodging are both back, as is flash guarding, which is the ability to enhance your attacks for a short period if a block is performed at just the right time. Alongside that is the returning flash dodging, from E's Memories of Salsetta, which allows players to slow down time from enemies if they dodge an attack at just the right time. The game story is intriguing. At times, it can be admittedly a little bit predictable, but there always seems to be something new happening with fresh quandaries for Adol and his companions to investigate and explore at a regular pace. Not that you really need much of a reason to explore anyway, 
as it truly is a joy to uncover more of the map and find all of the island's treasures. Undoubtedly, the strongest and most personal tale the franchise has seen throughout its story history. Without spoiling anything, Donna's story and the history of the Eternian civilization steals the show, hands down, especially with the additions to her gameplay sections, exclusive to the PS4 and PC release. Unfortunately, sometimes the translation isn't quite as consistent as what fans of the series might have been used to with previous titles, and I can see that affecting others' views on the otherwise fantastic story. I hope that the translation can see some polish later on down the line, but admittedly it could have been better to begin with, but I'm not going to harp on that because this game is just simply fantastic. As you roam around the island, you'll encounter many ferocious beasts which, fortunately, Adol and his companions are more than ready to take down. The game's combat is fast paced with battles occurring in real time. You'll be in control of one character while the computer controls two others. It's really an intuitive battle system, and it won't take long before you're hacking, slashing, blocking, and dodging with ease. Ease has always been about gameplay first and story second. Part of this is what makes Ease 8 a bit of an outlier. Much like Falcom's other well-known series, which is The Legend of Heroes, Ease 8 comes packed with a lot of story content, breaking up the usual fast-paced action gameplay. Besides that, the game is much more open than any of the Ease titles before it, really letting you explore parts of the island at your own pace, and giving the game a lot more content than any other Ease game up to this point. While E7 on the PS4 did take me well over 50 hours with all the side content cleared, keep this in mind that this was well over 50 hours on what basically amounts to a second playthrough. You'll probably get even more time out of the game if you didn't already know what to look for, which is what's going on. I can't stress enough how much better the exploration is in Ease 8 than basically any other game in the franchise. Adol has remembered how to jump, which is something he really didn't do in Salsetta. And along with usual upgrades, he gains along the way, such as the ability to breathe underwater, light up dark caverns, and more. Mapping out the world has never felt better. As mentioned, this game has a lot more side content than ever before, and each corner of the map is littered with something worth your time. Whether it be useful items, interesting enemies to fight, or even simply a good view. Even though Ease 8 is definitely not open world, there are more than enough reasons to explore. And while the PS4 version of Ease 8 might still show its Vita roots from time to time, the game can still look stunning even if the visual bar isn't hitting the same level of consistency as compared to how it is on the Vita. For what it's worth, Ease 8 runs at 1080p with an unlocked frame rate and frequently manages what feels like a solid 50 to 60 FPS in most scenarios. Although there can be dips when too much is happening on the screen. I mentioned that the PS4 version of Ease 8 added more content to Donna's story. But I really can't be but it really can't be understated just how much this really fleshes things out. Ease 8 is easily one of my games of the year. And with Donna's additions, and with Donna's additions, they fix what was a major complaint that many have had with the original Vita releases pacing. Adol's new content features an extra dungeon tied to the new content and the addition of suppression battles. Even the minor additions of new boss fish to tackle, to tackle with your fishing rod around the world and the inclusion of night searching, certain areas gives the game just the right amount of extra polish needed to elevate it to the next level. Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Donna is an exhilarating adventure with plenty of secrets to uncover and an absolutely 
glorious island for you to explore. If you're a fan of the series, or even just a fan of RPGs in general, the Lacrimosa of Donna is an easy title to recommend. Its fast-paced combat system and intriguing storyline will keep you hooked throughout. Ease's gameplay has never been better. The soundtrack for this game is perhaps my favorite in the series to date. And I'm going to go so far as to say it's my favorite video game RPG soundtrack ever. And even minor characters are actually memorable. Overall, Ease 8 makes a compelling argument for being one of the best RPG releases in the West for what has already been a crowded and star-studded year. While long-time fans might be put off by the newfound emphasis on story content, Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Donna stands out as one of the year's greatest RPGs. So it gets the Casanova seal of approval, and I'm telling you right now, go out and cop this right now. And that just about wraps up this video of Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Donna. And I have to again thank NIS America and Falcom so much for sending me this review copy and letting me play this masterpiece of a game. So go out and cop this September 12th when it comes out because I'm, I'm, I promise you, man, this game is amazing. I, I'm so serious right now. And I'm just, I'm hyped to see the series back. And, and to see it done to the level that it's done. Man, Ease and Zelda, that's my childhood right there. So, um, I hope you guys liked this video. If you want to enter any of the giveaways, the link's down in the description below. And until next time, Deuce is Wild. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Again, shout out to NIS America and Falcom. So, I'll see y'all in the next one. Deuce is Wild. You got the spotlight, girl, you demand all the attention Starry eyed, maybe I need a new prescription I, I, I see you on top of me, I'm having visions While you spin it around, I'm getting dizzy, baby Drop and roll, hot like a fire